And I want to acknowledge Larry and the Pachakcha crew for uh, supporting the production I'm about to tell you about. I really appreciate the support. So hit it, Bob. John Steinbeck said, the theater is the only institution in the world which has been dying for 4,000 years and has never succumbed. It requires tough and devoted people to keep it alive, and I count myself as one of those people. Theater is in my blood, it's my language, it's what I love, and it's why I produced Angels in America last month in Bozeman. Throughout the pandemic, those of us in the performing arts enjoyed our own special kind of hell, uh, no outlet for our art. Stages were empty, theaters were shuttered, and as the pandemic began to ease, I looked for a play to produce that reflected our challenging times, a mysterious disease infecting citizens daily, our governor and lawmakers in Helena passing senseless bills attacking our queer community, and the search for hope and connection in an increasingly isolating world. The word theater comes from the Greeks. It means the seeing place, the place people come to see the truth about life and the social situation. It felt like just the right time for Tony Kushner's epic Angels in America, and this would be Montana's premier semi-professional production. Focusing on the AIDS crisis of the mid-80s and the Reagan administration's response, the play eerily mirrors our current pandemic and political upheaval. It's also chock full of magic, humor, and hope. Initially, my idea was met with no small amount of skepticism. You're going to produce a three and a half hour play about AIDS? <laughs> you don't have a theater, you don't have a crew, you don't have a budget. Um, it made for some sleepless nights and doubting myself, thinking I must be crazy. Nevertheless, I persisted. The quality of any production ultimately rests on the shoulders of the actors bringing it to life. Before committing to the play, I needed to find my Roy Cohn. The real-life lawyer and real-life Donald Trump mentor here on the left is a fictionalized and very important character in the play, and luckily my college buddy Daniel Erickson, shown on the right, was available to play the role. Next, I purchased the performing rights, uh, secured dates at the Emerson Theater, and then of course I bought a large pair of wings on Etsy. <laughs> Shown here hanging in a room in my house as a constant reminder to keep moving forward because I had already invested in a large pair of wings. <laughs> a few people had said no, but gradually all the right people said yes, including donors. <laughs> Not to imply that fundraising was easy by any stretch, but people knew and trusted my 25 years creating theater in Bozeman, and they believed in the message of the play. Funding came through even without a nonprofit umbrella, and the enthusiasm for the production was overwhelming, and I am forever grateful for the support. By early December, I found myself wearing a lot of hats. Producing the play had become a full-time job. I had to finish casting, secure rehearsal space, assemble a technical crew, continue fundraising, and oh yeah, direct the play. The ability to delegate along with an organized and reliable stage manager is key, and I found both. Here's the full cast uh, after our first read-through, minus Rabbi Ed Staffman, who we all agreed was perfectly cast as our rabbi. It was exhilarating to have uh, in-person rehearsals again. I had to pinch myself every time I walked into the room with 25 people there, and not a single case of COVID the entire time. I was floored by the generosity of our community and donations of furniture, props, costumes, and rehearsal space. Rehearsals demand a lot of time, enough room, and privacy. And here we are rehearsing in the donated spaces of the Congregation Beth Shalom, where we tried to swear very softly and a meeting room at Alpine Dental. <laughs> Another item on my list was publicity. Live theater is nothing without an audience. Um, so in January, I scheduled interviews, and I sat down with my friend Keitra at Classic Inc. She created our beautiful image, which you might have seen online in newspapers, posted all over town, and maybe once or twice on my Facebook page. Um, a key player missing from our tech crew was a set designer, so I did it myself. I'd never designed a set before, but I knew it could be minimal. And this is my rough sketch, <laughs> and I'm sure this is not what they teach in design school. As we loaded into the theater, my set design definitely morphed a bit. I began to realize the monumental shift in the production as we took intimate scenes we'd rehearsed in a dentist's office to the cavernous em Emerson Crawford Theater, adding lights, sound, and special effects. And you'll notice a woman hanging from the ceiling. Meriwether Campbell played the angel, and we were determined to fly her in for the final sequence as written. On the left is a rough sketch of what we imagined the flying sequence might be. <laughs> 
And on the right, a photo of Meriwether from the platform of our flying, our flying specialist built high above the stage. She tiptoed out onto it each night during the performance with large wings strapped to her back and then was gently lowered down. Despite hundreds of light and sound cues and special effects and costume changes, Tech Week went pretty well. And if you know theater, Tech Week can be really nerve-wracking. Um, but I feel like I kept it together for the most part. Um, but here I am at the booth looking a bit crazed. Um, <laughs> thanks to my friend Sean Ricky for taking pictures that week and capturing that moment. And here's the cast and crew warming up together before a performance. The collaborative nature of theater can be challenging, but it's what I love about theater. And as a director, there's just no better feeling in the world than watching a true ensemble working beautifully as one on stage and backstage. And as a bonus, we all made some friends off stage. And the final production exceeded my expectations and audiences were captivated, including actress Glenn Close, who thrilled our cast by giving a rave review after a matinee performance. And side note, everyone who wanted to be paid was paid for their work. This experience reminded me to follow my heart, trust my gut, lean into a challenge, and go for it. As a character in the play says, don't be afraid. People are so very afraid. Don't be afraid to live in the raw wind, naked, alone. Learn at least this, what you are capable of. And next year, we hope to present Angels in America Part Two: Perestroika. And here's our final scene, in case you missed it. The great work begins. The messenger has arrived.